What are the 100 funniest moments of the 20th century? Everyone has their own list. Now on three, okay? One, two, three. Funny picture, Charlie. Funny, Steve. Yeah. This is one of the funniest comedy I've ever seen in my life. Well, you gotta see it to believe it. Well, you better believe it, cause you ain't gonna get to see it. <laughs> my wife went to the beauty parlor. She got a mud pack for two days. She looked nice. Then the mud fell off. Good evening. I'm Chevy Chase, and you're not. From slapstick to the unexpected, and favorite moments of the stars. We've searched them out from coast to coast, America's all-time favorites in the 100 Funniest Moments of the 20th Century. Slapstick, an exaggerated depiction of characters undergoing humiliation. Right from the beginning, the secret ingredient has been a custard pie finding its way into somebody's face. Better them than us. Perhaps that's why slapstick will never go out of style. Uh, do we leave out anything else? No. What? Oh, you left out one more thing? Uh -huh. Well, let's get to it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See you, folks. Now, what I thought I'd do is kind of give you an idea of the show. You know, we don't want to ever do anything ridiculous just for the sake of getting a laugh. We... <laughs> we like to keep... We like to keep away from uh, slapstick comedy. You know, we'd like to keep away from that low comedy that gets us laughter from seeing people in some physical discomfort. Most of us here think... <laughs> Why is it that everything has to be done so broadly? If you have something funny to say, people will laugh. <laughs> but... <laughs> Why kill myself when all I have to do is come out and talk to you. I mean, really come right out among you and talk. <laughs> the years go by, but slapstick still strikes the funny bone in just the right place. Cindy, could you help me move this ironing board? Oh, don't bother. Oh. I can do it myself. Oh, good. Do you just hold the iron? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> to have an altercation. Lancecroft, you are a despicable human being. Take that. <laughs> you really think you can do that to me and get away with it, you wretched creature? A woman? You know what it is being married to Evelyn? Boring! Mm. You leave me no alternative but to end this thing once and for all. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to do this, Lancecroft, but I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> There is no other way. <laughs> oh, Evelyn. 
Evelyn, Evelyn, I can't go on living without you. Sure you can. From the Keystone Cops to the Naked Gun, the Pratt Falls of bumbling men in blue have provided us with many favorite moments of slapstick. Director Max Sennett created the original recipe. A dash of circus, a little burlesque, a touch of vaudeville, and the chase. The advent of sound would bring further levity to the law. Inspector Kane speaking. What? I'll get right over with two of my best men. Thank you, boys. Where'll you be when I need you? Right here. Okay. <laughs> oh, let me just give you a few pointers on how to handle rowdies. The first thing you do is to get the psychological edge on your adversary by showing supreme confidence. How do you do that? When you brace yourself for that first punch, you make yourself hard all over, and nothing can hurt you. Let me show you. And you hit me right there, just as hard as you can. Well, it won't make a dent. <clears throat> Go ahead, Oak. It's okay. Come on, Oak. Come on. See, I'm braced. See? Uh, you can't hurt me. Come on. All you got. Come on. Oh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> you want to help Barn in that chair there? Did that hurt Barney? <clears throat> No, that didn't hurt him, because he was braced for it, weren't you, boy? See what the lab boys had come up with on Nordberg's jacket. The one they'd found in the dock. You can tell a lot from fiber samples if they aren't too wet. And I was hoping in this case we wouldn't come up dry. Hey, look out! Anybody catch the license plate? Company. Slapstick on the airwaves begins with radio, where an all-time favorite moment was the sound of Fibber McGee's closet. Show all the trivia my air raid warden's helmet, Molly. I wouldn't know where to look for it, dearie. Oh, I know where it is. It's right here in the hall closet. Oh, no, no. Straighten out that closet one of these days. That's the way it was in radio days. When television came along, you were there. Jack Benny's radio fans could finally see Jack's well-protected vault. How do we get across? Oh, don't worry. No worry. Guest star Giselle McKenzie accompanied the miserly Mr. Benny. this moat put in, I, I made it a toll bridge, you know, and then I figured it was silly, it's only me. You know? <laughs> and I'm just going to take some money out of the, out of the ball. All right, <laughs> Mr. Benny. That's good. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs>
In the 1950s, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis attracted a new generation of fans for slapstick. While other slapstick comedians relied upon their bodies, Jerry achieved hilarious results with his remarkable rubber face. Tonight, this is my partner's song, and this is a very, very beautiful tune, by the way. And uh, this is a song that... Uh... Would you like to excuse me? I was talking... <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, this is a song that my partner... Here, you're very rude I was talking to him And get up here I'll have to ask you not to be so impertinent Now, here, well Well, if you want to fool around, try and follow me Take off your clothes. Here! I don't even know you. Take off your clothes. I will not, sir. Take them all off. Right now? Take my damage. Yes, yes we. Yes, we are. Is this, is this important? This is real important. All righty. You're not supposed to eat those things. I like it. I like it. Your reflexes, right? Reflex, yeah, that's important, eh? Oh, sure. Now we've got to see if you're all right. Okay. How's that feel? I don't mind it at all. I like it. I like it. That doesn't bother you? No, not at all. Nothing? No, I don't mind. Well, forget it. Get off the couch. Steve Allen made slapstick fashionable for the thinking man. He used slapstick to poke a little fun at the world. Hey, Daddy. Hey, kids. Hey, Alan. How are you doing? Oh, I feel pretty good. Well, I guess the train ought to be along any minute now. Yeah, I should think so, yes. You look fine. Well, I feel pretty good. How's yourself? Oh, just well, Couldn't be better. <laughs> yeah. We haven't seen each other. Uh, why don't you give me a call someday? Oh, we'll get together. Have a little dinner. You like that? Uh... I'm your boy. I'm your boy. <laughs> That uh, was you first, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, give me a ring, though, won't you? I'll do that. What's your number? Um, well, that's in the book, but in case you forget it, it's Bayview, four, three, two, one. What an extension is it? <laughs> extension seven, two, one, five, six. How are you? How are you doing? Steve, boy, good to see you. I want to tell you, you're just looking great. Yeah, well, it's wonderful to see you, too, Charles. I'm a little dizzy, but you look very good. Listen, uh, when does the picture open? Well, it opens around the first of the year, Steve. I certainly hope you can make it. Yeah, well, I hope I live to see it. But uh, I heard it's a very funny picture, Charles. Funny, Steve? Yeah. This is one of the funniest comedies I've ever seen. Good, I... You're looking great, boy. Yeah, you're looking great. Well, I wish I felt that good. But is there a lot of action in the picture? Action? Yeah. Steve, this is one of the... Oh, most yeah! Exciting. Sid Caesar, Emma Jean Coca, and the gifted cast of your show of shows made slapstick seem elegant and intensely funny. My dear, we are going to try something. It's an experiment. I cannot guarantee anything. But we may bring back your memory. Or we may not. Are you game? No. My God! <laughs> you mean to say that you intend Exactly! Audley, bring it in. <laughs> All right, prepare the patient. <laughs> you 
you may bring back your memory, or you may be very wet. <laughs> we'll try it. All right, prepare to immerse the patient. Prepare for immersion. Immerse the patient. Immerse the patient. Coming up. First dunk coming up. I remember. I remember. Who are you? Esther Williams. <laughs> Slapstick was Phil Silver's trademark as television's unforgettable Sergeant Bilko. In one memorable episode, Bilko and his crew, in true slapstick tradition, were served up a generous helping of humiliation from their special guest. All right, men, give me those steely eyes, those hard muscles. I want all you fellow dope men, I want you back in the place. Sarge, that wasn't Goldman, it was a monkey. No. Hate your name. Edwin Dubro. Edwin Dubro. Edwin Dubro. Edwin Dubro, have you ever had rheumatism, pneumonia, smallpox, chickenpox, German measles? Next. No. Hate your name. Harry, speak up. Harry, speak up. Harry, speak up. Harry, have you ever had rheumatism, pneumonia, smallpox, chickenpox, German measles? Next. <laughs> Keep this line going. All right, all right, come on. No smoking. All right, everybody. Hey, don't go. Don't go. Come back here. So, something. I've got to stop the line. You've got to stop the line. Please, sir, let me explain. Next. Harry, speak up. Harry, speak up. Open wide. Uh. Overdeveloped canines. Next. Next. John D.K. Okay. Check. Next. Harry, speak up. <laughs> Next, Harry, speak up. Well, Harry, be free to talk, Harry. Do you love your mother and father? Or any frustrations? Do you agree? Are you agree with uh, frustrations? Calm down, young man. Do you, do you like her? Uh, be free to talk about it. Uh, any insanity in your family? Uh, father, mother, grandfather? All right, next. All right, Bill Benson. Uh, Bill, tell me about your mother and father. Were they kind to you when you were a child? What about oh, your aunt? Sir, please, just don't say anything until the general is off the post, please. What are you talking about? You know, this Harry speak up. What about Harry? I just had a nice chat with him. He's going to be all right. <laughs> Nobody did it better than Jackie Gleason and Art Carney on The Honeymooners. Good night, Norton. Part of their success was the way in which they convinced us they really were Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton. Hey, Ralph. Yeah, I think I changed my mind. I'm going to have a cigarette now. You want one? I ain't in there, man. Hey, Ralph, well, I dropped the match in the bed. Ralph, I dropped... No, no, man. Yeah! And finally, Orson Welles, best remembered for serious works like Citizen Kane and War of the Worlds, left us this marvelous moment of slapstick on the airwaves. In the days of silent films, the secret of success was to keep things moving. Nobody did that better than Charlie Chaplin. You could almost hear the sounds in Chaplin's silent classics. 
You certainly knew what they were trying to say to each other. But silent movie audiences often wondered if Slapstick did have a voice, well, what would it sound like? My name is Cecilia. <laughs> S-I-S-S-O-N. I starred in the first all-talking picture, Mississippi Melody. My career was going great guns when suddenly something happened. Overnight, I hit the skid. <laughs> now, when I watch all the old movies on TV, I say to myself, <laughs> Cecilia. <laughs> Old girl, with your looks and talent, you could have been one of the greatest stars today if you'd only been able to keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your old fiend, a friend, Phil Brusseling, a Lucid Clink, a Phil Lucid Brink, uh, bringing you a prescription description of today's pain. A play game. Uh, down on the CLIP, on the VLIC, digging out of the mud, uh, cutting out of the kumquat, out of the dugout, there's a Stacy Mendel, a Casey Stinkle, a Stinkle. Who, who do we out in the sea field? Uh, who do we see in the outfield? Ah, none other than that mighty Mackie Mendel. <laughs> Mini Michael Massey. Uh, mighty Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mantle. Uh, I didn't play, he was going to think today. <laughs> Feelers are on the plane. The players are feeling no pain. <laughs> the players are on the field. So now I'd like to, I'd like to turn over. I'd, uh, I'd like you to turn over. I'd like to turn you over to your regular announcer. How do you do, Mrs. Broadbottom? Oh, yeah. All right, Would you mind taking care of the baby while I go into the drugstore? I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you. One voice America loved was the craggy, cranky man who hated babies and most other things. My little woolly bitches, don't you know to swallow a thing like that would kill you? I'll get it, here she is. No harm done, no harm done. Had a mole? Yeah, I've had it all my life. Don't have it anymore. <laughs> Spike Jones and his troupe added music to the sounds of slapstick. Here's Spike's crew ravaging cocktails for two. In some sacred road. Ernie Kovacs in the middle of his distinguished Nairobi trio.
What song we were singing? <laughs> <laughs> <Come on! I will be a great singer. I will be a great singer. Good. A great singer. A great, a great singer. A great, a great singer. A great, a great singer. A great sing, 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 no, no, sing, no, sing, sing. I will be a sing, sing, I'll be sing, a sing, sing, no, sing. No, no. You're fighting me. Borga then, and now, shows us that humor abounds in the sounds of slapstick.
Buster Keaton, the great stone face of the silent screen, the chairman emeritus of the slapstick school of body language. Keaton was an incredible acrobat who added many original moves to the art of physical comedy. We've selected our next favorite moments from a gifted group of stars who, like Buster Keaton, mastered the art of physical comedy. Hello? What? No, I'm sorry, I don't know. What? I'm afraid I've no way of knowing that. Well, no, how would I know? No, I'm afraid I don't know, I just don't know, that's all. <laughs> well, why do you ask me? I'd be the last person in the world to know that. <laughs> One moment, please. Hello, British intelligence. <laughs> darling, 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 you know how busy I am. I've told you never to call me during World War II. Come <laughs> and resemblance to a certain Jerry General. <laughs> and we're going to disguise you as this officer yes, and sir. send you behind their lines in the hope that you will provide us with information that will prove invaluable. Yes, sir. Now, your chances for survival are quite good because you're almost identical in appearance. Yes, sir. Except, of course, for these glasses. Uh, I think we'll just take them. They'd be a dead giveaway. <laughs> Jenkins. Yes, sir? I want you to take a look at this photo. Okay. Put me glasses, sir. Can't see a thing without me glasses. Well, you have to learn to get along without. Yes, sir. Now, come over here. I want to show you the cup. <laughs> now, what seems to be the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I think I stepped in some gum. <laughs> Up to me knees, sir. Well, get rid of the glasses. Here, Jenkins, take a good look at this photo. Study it closely. <laughs> this is an important power plant in Dusseldorf. Do you see it? How could one miss it, sir? Jenkins, I want it destroyed. <laughs> destroyed, sir. I want you to think German. I want you to breathe German. You're a German from the top of your head to the tips of your tippy tip toes. Remember that. Never forget that you are German, German, German. Hello. What? Smashing news. It's over. We've won. We've won the war. We've beaten the kraut. Kraut? <laughs> Who are you calling a cow? Yeah. <laughs> in your glass and drink it right down, but be sure and ask for Guzzler's Gin, a nice, smooth drink. <laughs> <laughs> Red Skeleton as America's favorite, slightly polluted pitch man. <laughs> Dinner. Drink some before you won't have to eat any dinner. <laughs> but Guthers, there's no bad taste, no after effects, <laughs> no upsetting the nerves, <clears throat> just a nice smooth drink. <laughs> Fall on your glass! Right 
America also had a favorite slightly polluted pitch woman. It's so tasty, too. <laughs> no one told poor Lucy that Vitamita Vegemin was preserved with alcohol. Lucy teamed up with Gail Gordon for some electrifying slapstick on Here's Lucy. Well, I can see your sleeve down there. Oh, uh, and hey, what? I think I see the wires. Uh, I am going to call the electrician. You well, are I going to do nothing of the kind. Now you just stand back there. You're not going to waste any money on an electrician. All right, now. Tim Conway as the dentist you'll never forget with Harvey Corman. Ah. Oh. There'll be a little bit of pain and then numbness will set in. Laverne and Shirley, herbal wrapped and trapped at the fat farm. They'll try anything to get to the snack cabinet. Okay, 
One, two, three. How are we going to get the food? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Get on three. All right. One, two, three. Fatty Arbuckle was a king-size star with king-size talent, who sometimes played the lady in the piece. Outrageous costumes have always played a major part in the shaping of slapstick. Since Fatty's time, many of our greatest comedians have delighted their audiences by dressing in drag. Here come some all-time favorites just around the bend. Could that possibly be Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile? Or another sultry senorita from south of the border? It certainly could be if it was Milton Berle on television's first great comedy show. Milton Berle led the way for television's greatest ladies. Our guest tonight is someone who has hit the top of the music business. Let's welcome her now. The leading producer of song hits and the queen of the now sound, Big Maudie herself, Maud Pricker. Reach out, you cap. Here comes Big Maudie. I'm a red-hot chick with a stone-cold body. <laughs> Big I just had a drum roll in my garter belt. <laughs> All over my body. Uh, don't the names of the recording uh, group sound Pull fit? those real hard ones. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, I do wish you'd That's a little me. thing we yes. play at the home. Get right. <laughs> back to the subject, please. Yeah. All right. I don't care. What is your latest mm. song? What is that? I don't know. I have a pet toad and I just squashed it. <laughs> I'll give it to him for keeps this time. Here! <laughs> <laughs> service! What about a little service? Where's my bunny? Service! <laughs> to believe it. Well, you better believe it because you ain't going to get to see it. I don't know why you call this thing a drink. It tastes like sarsaparilla. It really does. Don't touch me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't touch me. You got a lot of nerve, honey. Don't put your hands on me. You don't know me. Don't come in here touching me. You got a lot of... You can't just come up and grab something. They got rules against bunny touching. <laughs> just because I'm dressed like this doesn't mean I'm a loose woman. Dear Lord, this is the church lady. Yes, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Today, Satan appeared to me in the form of a young busboy at Wally's Burger House. 
Yes, sir, it's true. But with your help, I spit on his shoes and slapped his little face. <laughs> you know what? He called me a crazy old hag, and I said, Try telling that to the Lord, devil man. <laughs> I will continue to fight the Beastmaster in your name. The Lord Almighty, the big man upstairs, the great kahuna, the cloudmeister, the heavenly stud. <laughs> Sorry, it always excites me a little bit when I say that. <laughs> God. Hey, man. Oh. Now a little exercise and off to bed. All righty. The body is the Lord's temple. Up to heaven and down to hell. And up to heaven and down to hell. Up to heaven and down to hell. And you're jogging in place. Yes, you are. Your knees are up. You're running from Satan. Running from Satan. <laughs> Satan's coming to get you. He's coming to get you. Satan's on your buttocks. Satan's on your buttocks. Shake him off. Shake Satan off your buttocks. Shake Satan off your buttocks. And superior. And superior. And superior. And superior. Hey, Neptune. Neptune, I'm not through yet. <laughs> and neither is Slapstick, still going just as strong as these venerable statues. Are you through? Almost. <laughs> I guess when your plumbing gets old, you keep going. <laughs> Between the water and having to look down at those coins in the fountain is driving me crazy. Neptune, guess what? What? Come Friday, I'll be 500 years old. Androphanes. You're 500? You don't look a day over 380. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's been that long since my toes fell off. <laughs> it has? Yeah. I really miss those toes. Well, you've been here as long as I have. You'd be surprised what you can get along without. <laughs> Oh, honeymoon, shine on in June. Oh, hear me croon, this lovely tune. Trees and bees are sighing and crying. It lovely, let me lay the red rose right. Oh, honeybee, be sweet to me. My heart is free. Here's the key. Lock up your garden gate, honey. I know you'll wait under the rambling rose tree. Pick your pinky pepper for your papa's pride. Beg a burning blossom for your blood. An unforgettable moment with Jack Benny and George Burns, one of our 100 funniest moments of the 20th century.